Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I'm here with the Hitachi L7450, which is a diode array detector, which is a part of a Hitachi HPLC system, which is a high liquid chromatography system. It is used for analysis of liquids with visible and ultraviolet light sources. So this should actually contain some kind of a visible light source, but also a deuterium lamp, which uh, should be the source for the ultraviolet light. So I'm looking forward to take this apart and see what it actually has of nice parts. As you can see, it is completely smashed up. But just looking through the different holes in it, it seems that the electronics is pretty intact and it is only the outer shielding that has taken some serious damage while this was thrown out. I would invite you to buy some of my merchandise or become a member of the channel in order to support future videos. But not just the videos, you will also be supporting my website which is kaiserpowerelectronics.dk where I document all my projects. But you will also support the highvoltageforum.net which is a forum I run in order to help and give a space for others to seek out information, share information, and there are some really great users there, some really cool projects. I would really like you to check that out. So check out the links in the description. Let's start out with a quick overview of the unit. If we take a look at the front here, there is nothing more than two status LEDs and a on-off button. The whole front here has just been some kind of plastic shielding. At the side we have the in and outlet of the liquid that is going to be analyzed. Has some nice stickers here. Beware of high voltage, 500 volts. Beware of high temperatures, can cause burns. Beware of explosions. High concentration of organic solvent vapor may lead to explosion. Well, that's fantastic. So what do we have on the back side? Have a GPIP interface, as we would expect. We can see that the model number is the L7450, Hitachi, and not really any date marks. But we can see it consumes 180 VA, so just below 200 watts. So uh, I'm not expecting to find any high power parts in this. So let's just get the shielding off and see how damaged the unit really is. I think it's pretty safe to say that that was one pleasant and unpleasant surprise. Uh, this uh, deuterium tube just fell out of the unit when I opened up that shield at the side. I did not really expect something as fragile as this just being rattling around inside, but it actually seems that it's in perfect condition. I mean, it does not sound like there is anything inside the tube rattling around, so I actually assume that it's in good shape. Nice! So let's get the uh, shield shielding off. Okay, so there seems to be some kind of light chamber down here that this would be mounted down into. We have some power supply, dual power supply, some heat sinking at the back, probably some driver boards. Some, uh, I think this is the analysis chamber, as we have the inlets and outlets of the liquids. And over on the side here we have all the control electronics. So, controlled by Silinx FPGAs. Two of those. And seems to be some large board underneath there. Okay, I did say that it looked pretty unharmed, but I can see it has decapped a EEPROM down here. So uh, let's just get some of all this taken apart and see what kind of nice parts we can find inside. So this was really chock full of very nice parts. 
And I think we can for sure guess that this would be from around the 2000s, judging by the packages we see all around the board. Now it has a Multiply Silence XC 2018 FPGA sitting around. Has some, uh, yeah, not quite of just custom ICs, but also have some HD64 um, microcontrollers. Now, since this is just one part of a whole column of equipment that we saw at the start of the video, I think we can safely say that the two Ethernet plugs over here, which connects to the other instruments, and we have all the different parts connecting down to the instrument itself, that this is the diode array detector control board. It sits down on a motherboard platform, where it also sits along with this board here, which is named H16 CPU M. So I assume this is the CPU board. So the CPU board and the motherboard down here is probably going through all these series equipment for this column of HPLC analysis. It has a 16 megahertz crystal sitting here, so at least one of these CPUs is running 60 megahertz. At the bottom we just have a repeat of the same FPGAs and microcontrollers, has a uh, yeah, broken EEPROM, but other than that it's just a lot of signal conditioning and protection for the two plug-in boards here. The large power supply is rather interesting. It is a Nemec Lambda, so this is from before that the Lambda became the brand name of this company. It is the UNK 5A power supply. It has an input range of 100 to 240 volt AC, but the outputs are quite interesting. We have channel 1, 5 volt DC, channel 2, 12 volt DC, channel 3, minus 12 volt DC, channel 4, 24 volt DC, channel 5, 10 volt DC, channel 6, part 1, 70 volt DC, but Part 2 is rather interesting. It's 310 volt max with a start pulse and then it decreases to just above channel 1. So channel 2 starts out at 310 volts for a 2 microsecond pulse and then drops down to just above 71 volt DC. So that probably has to do with igniting one of the lamps used for generating light sources. Either the ultraviolet or the visible light. It is pretty standard here at the input with a input filter, we have a bridge rectifier, we have a DC bus bulk capacitance. Then we have some small power, power supply controllers sitting around. And as we know, we have these six different channels. So we will at least also have six different outputs out over here. And we can for sure say that we have a probably PFC chopper sitting here at the start, then we have a either dual or parallel. Not quite sure of the configuration here, but seems to be center tapped output from these two transformers. We have a regulation sitting here, over here, 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 and over here, maybe a standalone control board is sitting up here. So that is almost six different power supplies that we see sitting at this part of the power supply unit. Next to the detector it had this uh, weird board, which looks half like a power supply, but yeah, I'm not quite sure what that really is. Just has two wires in, two wires out, so we will see once we get inside the detector unit itself. But with this weird shielding on it, it looks very homemade and not something Hitachi would order as a standalone unit for just supplying something has a few marks down here with minus and plus 5 volt, so perhaps this is just a plus minus 5 volt DC power supply as there is no minus 5 volt supplied from the main power supply. The uh, light source chamber and the uh, slit unit here with the in and output of the hoses is all interchangeable. Some of these uh, units can actually use a mercury lamp for a specific nanometer uh, wavelength of uh, detection light source, uh, so you can change these out uh, easily. And that's what we saw dangling around, the deutrium lamp here. So uh, we'll just take good care of that and leave that over there. And if we take a look at this 
inlet outlet plate here, which is marked for nanometer slit. We can see it contains a liquid chamber through which the liquid goes. Here we have our light source shine into it. And in this black plate here, we can perhaps just see that there is a small slit in the middle of the plate. And from here on, the light will go into the whole detection chain. So uh, let's get the lid off and see what kind of mirrors and uh, whatnot there is before the light goes through here and hits the diode array, which should be very interesting. Some of the success onto this being conserved, despite the rough handling, is this massive base plate on which it's mounted. Now, when you deal with something like light sources for detection and analysis, you really need your hardware to be put in a very stable position so you do not have it going everywhere. Oh, wow. Did that break off? Yeah, okay. So, unfortunately, a prism or mirror here sitting over here has broken off. But we can see we have the light shining in this direction. Hits the reflector. And over here we have another mirror. Fits in there. So light shines through here, goes over to this mirror, shine back into this prism. Let's get this one out and see if we can find the diode array. Oh, there it is. Wow, I thought that was just a gold-plated chip, but that's the actual detector. Wow, look at that. Gold-plated legs, but here we have the uh, ever so open slit which is getting less and less due to the wavelength that it wants to detect. Wow, that's nice. Since it's already broken, let's just uh, get the board out and take a closer look at that detector. So here we have it, the nice gold-plated pin ceramic package, the diode array detector itself. We have all the data lines coming out here and the four white wires going off to the power supply actually seems to, yeah, this connects to the back of it. Could be a power supply to the diode array detector itself, or it just could be power out because the two wires down here is for sure to a Peltier element. So this is a temperature control chip, which is kept at a certain temperature to ensure its calibration is always the same. So some very nice parts uh, in this unit for sure. Now the broken off mirror over here, maybe that actually ain't so crucial to the operation unless you want to calibrate it, because it seems that it would just shine over or reflect light into that black matte path over here on the side. So that's a reference point. Now it has this um, weird black foam everywhere which with age have turned all sticky and it gets everywhere. So this unit is extremely contaminated with dust and particles from this foam, except the sensor. That's in pretty good shape. 